Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 51. In this Power Tip, we'll talk about parasitic components within a capacitor. In this chart, I've shown three different styles of capacitors and some of the parasitic components that go in, into the capacitor. Each particular capacitor style has its strength. For instance, the ceramic is a very small capacitor. It has low ESR and low ESL. The aluminum electrolytic, on the other hand, has a, a large amount of capacitance. And although I didn't show it, it has a low cost. On the downsize, it has higher ESR than the ceramic capacitor, and then it, then it also has higher ESL. And this is going to degrade the high frequency performance of the capacitor. And then the aluminum polymer capacitor is somewhere in between. Typically, you can get a moderate amount of capacitance. The ESR is somewhere between the ceramic and aluminum electrolytic. And the ESL is generally between the aluminum electrolytic and the ceramic capacitor. So what does that mean in the frequency domain? And on this chart, I've plotted the impedance of these capacitors over frequency. The blue line is the ceramic capacitor. The red line is the aluminum electrolytic capacitor. And then the green line is the aluminum polymer. For the ceramic, we see that its impedance is much higher than the other two capacitors at frequencies up to around 500 kilohertz. And then at above 500 kilohertz, the impedance of the ceramic capacitor is much lower. And that means it'll be a much better filter element in this frequency range. For instance, if your power supply is operating in the 500 to 700 kilohertz operating frequency range, you will have a better filter with the ceramic capacitor than you will with the other two capacitors. The aluminum electrolytic capacitor sh shown in red obviously has a lot more capacitance than the ceramic capacitor. We're seeing almost a two orders of magnitude difference in its impedance at low frequencies. Uh, we'll find that its impedance at mid frequencies is limited by its ESR and that frequency extends all the way up into the 500 kilohertz range where the ESL of the aluminum electrolytic tends to dominate. And then finally, in between the two is the aluminum polymer capacitor. It, again, it's a trade-off of capacitance between the ceramic and aluminum electrolytic capacitor. Uh, you'll find, however, at moderate frequencies, the aluminum polymer has the lowest impedance of, of the three capacitors. And this particular point on the curve is generally where the power supply is going to be operating. So you could end up with a much better filter performance with aluminum polymer if that was your only criteria in your power supply design. Uh, there are cases where you're just interested in the impedance of the capacitor. In that case, if you're operating at low frequency, the aluminum electrolytic would be the obvious choice. And then also, if you're operating at high frequencies, the ceramic would be the obvious choice. So it, it is kind of interesting. Uh, depending on the operating frequency, the impedance of the capacitor will, will set the output ripple. And so what we've done here is we've shown the three ripple components in a buck regulator. The red curve is the ripple component that's associated with the ESR of the capacitor. And since this is just simply the ripple current times this ESR value, it's also a representation of what the current in the capacitor looks like. So it's a linear ramp up and down, just like the inductor current is. The second curve is the ripple voltage that's associated with the ESL of the inductor. And that's shown in green. And the ESL component is simply a voltage divider between the output inductor in your buck regulator and the ESL of the output capacitor. And you can see that, it, that it's a square wave. And then finally, the blue line shows the ripple component that's associated with the output capacitance of the capacitor itself. And it is the integral of the ripple current. And so it works out to be a, a squared function. 
And so it's kind of interesting when you look at where these ripple components line up, you'll see that the um, ripple components associated with the ESL and the ESR are actually add in phase uh, at two points and they'll establish the ripple maximum if the capacitive component is small. And then you will see that the capacitive component is out of phase of the ESL, just like you would expect. The next chart is kind of interesting because now instead of having a buck regulator, we have a boost or maybe a flyback regulator running in deep continuous mode. The ripple that's due to the ESR is shown in red and it's in phase with the current that, that's in the output capacitor. So basically the, the red is ESR component or it is the output current of the power supply. And the second trace to show is the component that, that's associated with the capacitance. And it is just simply the, the integral of, of our out, output current. And so it's a nice linear relationship up and down and very easy to calculate. The, the, the third trace is the component that's associated with the ESL. And you'll see that I've had to divide the, the ripple voltage by a factor of 10 to get it to show up on this chart. And so with a discontinuous output current, the ripple voltage that's associated with the ESL can be pretty significant. And this is the reason that many times you see two section filters in boost and flyback converters. So thank you for your attention on this power tip. If you're interested in more power tips, visit Power Management Design Line, search on power tips, or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks for your attention.